Episode 17. Here at the Telltale Fisherman Podcast, we are looking to record the most epic fishing stories from around the planet. If you are listening to us from outside the U.S., we would love to have you share an epic fishing adventure from your country. Go to www.tell.fish slash guest to sign up to be on the show today. Welcome to the Telltale Fisherman Podcast, where avid anglers share the story of their best fishing day ever to inspire yours. Now it's time for another epic adventure. So here's your host, John Woodson. All right, welcome to the show. Today's guest is Brent Shelton. Brent, welcome aboard. How you doing? Great. It's great to have you here, and I understand you're coming to us from South Carolina, correct? Correct. Okay. Excellent. Well, I know there's a lot of great fishing up there, and uh, I know there's an epic fishing story to come. Before we get to that, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, I'm I'm actually a... Um I make nuclear fuel for the uh, nuclear reactors. Not so uh, uh, terrifying as people make it out to be. <laughs> so, so it's it's a lot safer than uh, people would think, I guess. Yeah, the the production is anyway. I mean, things could go bad. You, you've seen the news and and the issue in Japan a few years ago. But oh yeah, the the actual production is. I mean, we go through training classes regularly. Oh yeah, I bet. Okay, so this is are, are you making the fuel cells for uh for for reactors for power plants and stuff? Yes, the the my actually the my department makes the the uranium that they turn into the uh fuel rods. So, oh, wow. How cool is that? So how how did you get uh, that job? That's that's not your typical everyday uh career path, I wouldn't think. Exactly. I I never figured growing up that that's what I would be doing and and <laughs> it just I looked into it. That's that's a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting career path. As I say, I don't think I've ever met anybody who's uh, made fuel rods and things before. So, so that's pretty neat. Well, obviously, you uh, love to get out and do other things besides work, and and one of them I can tell from from the pictures I've seen is is fishing. Tell us a little bit about the kind of fishing you typically do. Well, I'm I'm actually. I do a lot of kayak fishing. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it started out just like most everybody else. I'd, I'd go and fish little small creeks with my parents, my grandparents. And uh, just a few years ago, uh, I took a guided kayak tour on one of the local rivers for a, a benefit. And mm-hmm. while I was out there, <clears throat> excuse me, all I could think was how cool it would be to get into some of these little coves and little crevices that are sure to hold fish. Oh yeah. And from there I was hooked. I, I, I bought me a kayak the next, next year. Awesome. So now do you do mostly freshwater or salt or both? I've only ever done freshwater. I mean, okay. I know I've got the coast and I, I talk about going out there and, and seeing what I could catch, but I, I mainly stick to, to bass fishing and, and, the, the local freshwater around here. Right, right. Well, I, kayaking is is something that I've gotten into recently and in, in the last couple of years as well. And um, I, I don't know if it's your experience, but I find a lot of times I catch more fish being on the on the kayak. Do you? Has that been your experience? To be be honest, I mean, you can it's you can get into waters that the bass boats cannot get into. Yeah, the more shallow waters and. Where where fish will be holed up and not expecting what you're going to be throwing at them. Right, that's right, and and you can be pretty stealthy on a kayak too. Oh yeah. So um, what you obviously have bass there. That's that's largemouth bass we're talking about. Um, what other freshwater species do you have there in South Carolina? Well, we have uh, crappie. We have uh, what they call a shell cracker. It's 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 a perch, but I mean, they, they eat a lot of the mussels and things in yeah. the lakes. Yep. And I found that around here a lot, there's what they call a chain pickerel. A lot of people around here call them a jackfish. Yes. We have those in Florida too. They're fun to catch, but 
You don't want to stick your finger in the mouth. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. They've got a few teeth in there for sure. Um, well, cool. So you, it sounds like you're well acquainted with all the species there in, in South Carolina. And um, one other thing that I wanted to ask you about, looking at uh, some of your Instagram posts in, in your bio there, uh, you are a self-proclaimed backyard pit master in, in foodie. And as some of your pictures uh, uh, can attest to, it looks like you're, you're pretty good at it. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy getting out and, and cooking on grill and firing the smoker up when I've got a long weekend. I've done a few briskets, and we actually done a, a big feast uh, a few days ago for my father-in-law for his birthday. And oh, cool. Just a good time. We've done, done some smoked salmon and a few other things. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if you do uh, a big big fish cookouts, too. I, I have. Yeah, I, well, I, I was just going to uh, tell the listeners that uh, if they're... If they take a look at your Instagram page and look at some of those pictures, they're they're going to get hungry for sure. At least I did anyway. When you when you kayak fish, um, how do, how do you normally set your rig up? I mean, do you you carry two three rods out there and and switch off between them, or do you go light and carry one rod and just kind of tie off different baits? It depends. I mean, I've got two different kayaks. I have uh, a sit inside kayak, a little small one that, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it'll zip up and down a river. I may bring three rods and a little small tackle bag, but my, uh, my big kayak, the 12 footer, mm -hmm. it's, I've got it set up. I take, every time I take it, it, it's got the depth finder all set up. I carry six rods and big tackle bag. Yeah. I just switch in between. If I see one's not, one bait's not working, I'll go to another rod and I'll go through the gambit of it and then I'll go and change out some lures and get back at it again. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the electronics there on your, on your kayak. Do you, do you find yourself using those a lot? I mean, are you out there fishing deeper structure and looking for bottom stuff with that? Or do you normally fish the shore or, you know, how do you use that? Well, when I do, uh, rivers, I, I look for structure, uh, mm -hmm. same with lakes, but mainly with the rivers, it's for the deeper channels and where some of the fish may be hiding at. Right. It'll ping anytime something pops up. Excellent. Well, that's, that's a pretty neat feature where, where I fish with my kayaks. We're usually in pretty shallow water, so it doesn't make much difference. Um, but it, it sounds like that's a pretty helpful tool for the water you fish up there. Yeah, we got one of the, one of the rivers I fish out here. I mean, it, it, it can go from a foot and a half on the edge on near the bank to eight or nine, 10 feet t towards the center. And there's a, we got a lot of the big boulders. Yeah. So you're looking for drop offs and, and structure for sure. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, cool. Well, when we get back, Brent is going to share an epic bass fishing story with us. Stay tuned. If you park your boat on an incline, you have to be careful to make sure it stays where you drop it. A wheel ring chalk for wheeled trailer jacks is a big help. They're inexpensive and they make sure that the wheel stays on a block if you elevate the jack. I use it with my boat all the time. And if you want to check it out, go to tell.fish slash gear in your browser. We have a link to it there. All right. We are back with Brent Shelton. And I understand we're going to be talking about uh, bass fishing in your uh, epic story. Is that right? Yes. My, my personal best largemouth. Oh, very nice. So tell us a little bit about where you were fishing and... Uh, and what was going on? Well, I was fishing a little small uh, pond in, in a little city park. Mm -hmm. And I'd been there several times and caught some decent fish, uh, decent size largemouth, uh, some nice size crappie. A few of the uh, chain pickerel that I mentioned earlier. And me and a buddy of mine, we went out one morning before we had to go in to work. And we tooled around for 30, 45 minutes before I got the strike. And, and she was nice. I mean, she was uh, 21, 22 inches and 
she was right under seven pounds. Wow. It ended up being the uh, record, and to this day, the record largemouth out of that pond. <laughs> did did they give you a plaque and make a statue of you to put in the park? I wish. <laughs> well, you should have. It sounds like that's a uh, it's going to be a long standing record, at least until somebody maybe catches that fish again and it's grown a little bit. But um, yeah, so that's that's pretty big for a South Carolina bass, right? For the uh, size water that I was on, it, it mm-hmm. was a pretty big one. I mean, what are what are some of the bigger bass you hear about coming out of South Carolina? I mean, do they is it regular to get a ten pounder? I mean, that's pretty rare, right? It's pretty rare, but they have been known. I mean, a buddy of mine caught a nine pounder just right down the road from his house in a little pond. Okay, yeah, it's it's amazing when the fish get up into that that range you're talking about. That you know seven, eight, nine pound range. It's it's almost mm-hmm. like catching a whole different kind of fish than than the smaller bass i mean was that was that your experience oh yeah I, I'll, I'll never forget oh no i bet not well so so tell us a little bit about uh you know how you were fishing for i mean were you out there with crankbaits or worms or you know fishing brush piles or anything what what was going on well i was cast towards the tree line and honestly i, I do things a little different um i like to think outside the box sometimes when i i throw lures i was mm-hmm. actually using a chatterbait oh, that i had taken okay. the skirt off of really i take yes and and i put a uh lizard on it in the baby bass color yeah and was tossing at the edge and i guess the vibration of the chatterbait and then when she seen the lizard she hit it Wow. See, I would have never thought to do that. I've I've recently started using chatter baits, but you know, I just put a little swim tail on there and leave the skirt on. That that must have been pretty interesting looking <laughs> having that big uh spoon blade coming through the water and a big lizard dangling behind it. Mm-hmm. It's I've noticed that when you use creature baits, a lot of people will use them Texas rig or Carolina rig. Yeah. And the bass see that. Mm-hmm. But if it's just swimming through on, on a chatterbait, yeah, that's that's a lot it, different. It's in a oh yeah, it, it worked out good in my favor. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, I, I I like the way you think there. I I may have to uh, may have to give that a try in my own home waters here. We have a, a lizard that is it's got the the green is like the lime green with the silver belly. Yeah. I think it's a Carolina anole or something like that. And the baby bass color on the lizard is real similar to that. So, I mean, I've had quite a bit of luck using that. Okay. So you, you actually have some lizards running around up there that you, you think the bass are used to feeding on those? I, I think so. Yeah. I think they like them. Yeah. Well, par- apparently that fish you found uh, liked them. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. So have you... Have you uh, gotten any fish close to that since that time? Um, not really. I've I've caught a few that were four or five pounds, but nothing with the girth that she had, right? The length that she had, right? And this was spawn season, so I mean, she she had to have been full of eggs. Very good. Well, cool. That that is an epic story. You got the park record, got your personal best, and um, did it, you know, while you were experimenting on on a new bait. That's always very satisfying. Oh yeah, awesome. Well, cool. Well, Brent, I'm so uh, thankful you shared that story with us, and I'm going to be uh, watching your Instagram post for the next time you you come up with a uh, a bright idea like that and and have a, a an epiphany on a new new unique bait because I may just want to copy it myself. <laughs> Not a problem. If it works, I. I... I'll put it out there. Yeah, please do, because uh, you, you know how we fishermen are. One one person gets on something good, and all the rest of us want to jump on that bandwagon. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you being on today. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Don't forget to visit tell.fish slash gear to get our recommendations on gear that will take your angling adventures to the next level and help make you the next Telltale Fisherman. 
This has been the Telltale Fisherman Podcast. Thanks for sharing another great tale with us. Be sure to check out the show notes page for more info on today's show and the gear we talked about. Keep those lines tight and we'll catch you next time right here on the Telltale Fisherman Podcast.